tuned to Off The Ball, the most petty and ill-informed sports programme on radio. Today's talking points, the week in Scottish football. Happy 100 Dundee United, some classic commentary and the handshake you won't forget. I'm Ray Bradshaw, he's Tam Cowan and you're tuned to the odd couple of Scottish football. Off the ball Tam Cowan Just back from London How are you? Uh, just back from London Highly recommended Great for uh, people watching Apart from anything else um, uh, Shane Ritchie Chris Eubank uh, Gary Lineker And Kim Young un So go to Madam I, Tussauds I was waiting. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> You need to go to Madam Tussauds Actually it's the best Madam Tussauds in the world In the Chamber of Horrors But genuinely is scary I was in Blackpool but, the week before And their big new attraction at Madam Tussauds Is Lewis Capaldi all oh, right, they've gone right, big right, on them. Right, but so. you know what the uh, you know uh, the, the the great thing is about uh, having spent a week in London. I can now maybe in the run up to Christmas, oh, I can readily now go for a drink in George Street in Edinburgh, and nothing will what, seem expensive. What was the most you paid? It's great. It's oh, such a Scottish conversation. Isn't it? I, as I know, but you get ridiculous things it's when you try to break it up when you're there with the wife and the way, and you maybe get you know uh, a pint a, and you think, oh, hang on a minute though, that was uh, men of rare. That's going to be right away anyway <laughs> you get maybe that glass of rosé wine for my wife and a, a J2O for the wine yeah. and you know it's like 32 quid you know and you think okay oh, hey. it's that holiday mentality isn't it you just, uh, you've just got to shut go your eyes it. but it's a magnificent city uh, it really you is you were saying uh, your legs are agony the, my legs are agony aye uh, but there we go. I'm surprised my wife you let me go to the place. <laughs> <laughs> but she was she was doing a lot of shopping. But no, my uh, you need to do, you need to be prepared to do plenty of walking. And even as you know, when you're on the underground, um, you know you when can sometimes have to walk for miles. You change a line, yeah, yeah, yeah it's well, very you know, different. So, isn't it? uh, it's exhausting, but it's it, oh, it's worth it. It's a magnificent place. Did you manage to catch much of the midweek football when you were down? And the no, I absolutely blanked it. And nearest they got to football uh, was a tour of the. House of Commons uh, by the Edinburgh MP and big jambo Ian Murray uh, nice. who's also written a book about the whole Hearts revival uh, post Vladimir Romanov so okay. I knew Ian I knew he was down there I thought you know you just I thought well, you just I, chance I, I got his number yeah. I had his number and uh, he says I didn't bother uh, didn't okay. come so that was that was a fascinating thing so what I would say though I mean it is me you the listeners it's your money that pays for places like parliament it yeah. pays the MPs uh, you know salary and expenses and all the rest of it so my top tip would be if you're doing in London look up who is effectively your MP in parliament yeah. or the nearest you can get and just ask them for a tour and was he quite happy to do it? And just yeah, he was it? delighted. He, he took a great, uh, some fascinating things, including showing us the cupboard. And it was a cupboard that... The, um, that Boris Johnson used to hide the, in? The, <laughs> no, that Emily Davison had in, so that when it came to the census, she could claim that her... Uh, place of residence was the House of Parliament great. and this was just a matter of a few months before she threw herself in front of the King's Horse you know it was great that's, that's security great. out of this world and did he mention his thoughts on Stephen Naismith because that uh, is a big topic of conversation with we didn't even mention now. that but again the other good thing about getting in to go back to my original point about the price of oh drink, I saw this we get into the Strangers Bar and uh, dearie, dearie. Quite heavily subsidised? Oh, it was unbelievable, honestly. It was, you know, you're, you're in a city where there is one uh, bar that a taxi driver told us it charges for ice, right? <sighs> Welcome wow. to London. So you compare that to the Strangers Bar in the House of Commons, where yeah. you were seeing like bottles of wine for less than 20 quid and a pint for four quid, you know, and it was incredible. It's is it any wonder they drink as much? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it really is. It was your second home as well. Some life, isn't Absolutely. It? Some life. Absolutely. But anyway, it was absolutely magnificent. I would uh, encourage you a wee trip to London. Some parts that you've got to shut your eyes and just pay the bill. Other parts, of course. You know, if you've got kids, their face will light up at the very thought of a picture next to Trafalgar Square, yeah, Buckingham yeah, yeah, Palace, yeah. all the classic yeah. cliches. Yeah, my, my wee boy's only three or four and he recognised, um, I should know he is four, why did I debate on his age? Um, he eyes lit up at Big Ben because he'd seen it on Peppa Pig. So yeah, it's things like that. So yeah, it goes. Well, that my way. wife was very disappointed to discover Big Ben was a clock. <laughs> so, but after, after we get over that initial disappointment, it was fine. The, the week lit up. Because I know you're quite a stickler for this. You record stuff. You'll come home. 
home. Did you catch any of the highlights from midweek or anything like that? Because yeah, yeah, the three Scottish w- teams in Europe was excellent this I, week. I, I must pay tribute. I did actually see it when I was away because I thought, right, where can you just get a, you know, a, 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 a kind of happy wee five-minute highlights package of these games? And uh, one of my pals, Colin, hello to Colin if he's tuned in, uh, said that for midnight you just Google like TNT. Yeah, they stick it on YouTube. Aberdeen v- yeah, they're Bale, really good for that. And you get your five. That's all you need yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah. So, in fact, I can summarise. I'll tell you what I thought of the games. You tell me what okay. you thought. The uh, Rangers, well, I've got to say first up for Scott Mullen, my colleague um, in here and a big Motherwell fan, Scott. I read his report on the Sparta Rangers game. Yep. And in that report, and this is a sort of mince that you love. Oh, you, I, kn- I know what you're going to say. You know what I'm going to say? Yeah, yeah, I do. But yeah, Scott yeah. said that Rangers yeah. had an... XG yeah. of 0. 0.02 yeah, yeah. he just casually threw that into his match report on the BBC Sports Scotland website and I and I thought nah I, I'm, I'm out of here I'm finished because it was bad enough with the high press and playing the ball into channels and where who's do, where, playing in the hole where do you stand in a low block exactly you but the X I said to Scott I said what, what did, and I wasn't as polite I said what does that mean and he said it just means they were rotten and barely had a chance <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? yeah. so an XG is your expectation Expected goals. Expected so goals. All come from a lot of young people now playing FIFA or EA, whatever it is, EAFC as it is now. And it's a big thing on Twitter and people talk about the expected goals and stuff like that. I saw that in that report and I was like, oh, because I think it was 0.02, which shows it's how It's just bad. modern. Honestly, see if I've been able to see Scott slip into my tackety boots, I wouldn't have liked to have seen the heat map of his home odds. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is something you should let us know. What kind of modern oh. football terms do you hate? Like a gig and press, like all those kind of things. The low block and the high block and the medium block oh, is something that does my nut in. I mean, you're all tight now. I'm, I'm well aware of those, but that that's that, I, I had no idea about that. Once it was explained, yeah, I thought, yeah, I've seen that graphic at the yeah. end of some of the games, but uh, it's just a lot of rubbish in it. But anyway, what you'd need to say is for Philip Clement uh, coming in, not soon as his choice, we'll come no. to that in a minute, uh, but for Philip Clement coming in, he seems like a proper manager yeah. for him to come in two clean sheets right away a draw away from home in Europe you need to think that was pretty decent he's got big ban tomato sauce energy done it yeah like, you do feel like no more monster munch in the training ground uh, absolutely well. like you know. kind of thing. and bizarrely even Barry Ferguson's back in them as well <laughs> I, think, I, I read Barry Ferguson's column this morning I was like that's just a copy and paste from a year ago <laughs> I just pretty checked out Michael yeah. Bale and Clement I, I, um, I watched uh, the Rangers go I, this, I'm going to say something that uh, I don't think I've said often when I've watched Rangers over the years. Uh, I thought Scott Wright made them a lot better when he came on. Scott, All right. Scott Wright right. and Danilo right. both came on at the same time and um, they seemed to go well. I think in Abdul Sima they've got an incredible player and he was playing wing back up there and I think he's kind of been glossed over because like Lammers and Dessers have all been so bad. Um, but the um, I thought he was so good. I saw another terminology you might... Right, what was uh, um, Oh, what was it? Um, so Paolo Bernardo who came on for the injured Rio Hattati for Celtic, he had what was it? Lane blocks, forty-six lane blocks, and that is oh. when a defender is trying to pass it out wide or through the channels, and he's blocking that pass off. So he had forty-six or forty-seven. <sighs> Next highest was Matt O'Reilly. See uh, where I'm worried. Does that not sound suspicious, Labes? If it's nudging towards American football, yeah, potentially. Yeah, yeah. That's, like, ah, well, you're going to get specialists and stuff like that by like. the so, end of it. Because I thought, the Celtic, what about the Celtic game? Oh, Tell me, you saw the exciting, whole game, really yeah. exciting. Some great goals from both teams. Um, Celtic kind of ran out a little bit of steam. There was lots of chat after the game about how Celtic could have done with a stronger bench and how they the opening goal was an absolute perler, wasn't it? Even so was Palmas as well. And then Murata's second, the second equaliser, a diving header that loops over the keeper into the top. It was a great game, but Celtic going toe to toe with Atletico Madrid. It shows how well they played that they're disappointed coming right. away. With I a mean, draw. I only, well, I only saw the highlights, but again, it shades it out with Real Madrid where they were really. Yeah, that first 50 minutes, 60 oh, minutes. Oh, yeah, roaring yeah. at the traps. Yeah. But then maybe, it maybe, you know, understandably run out a bit of steam. But yeah, it looked uh, decent. I think again. the worst one this week, though, and I watched Aberdeen. it. Oh. Aberdeen. I felt, I've got lots of Aberdeen uh, fans that I play football with. I messed them. I was like, I generally feel sorry for you because the fact they didn't get. That VAR decision on Jack McKenzie 
and then to go on and concede two really poor goals and then a quite a poor VAR penalty it just I felt for him so badly and a lot of it Barry Robson I think will be taking a bit of flack for substitutions yeah. Connor Barron was running the game and he got taken off Mioski for Duke um, a triple sub and yeah they just seemed to fall out the game but to be 2-0 up in Europe well you know what minutes to go, Tam, you do that think that's inexcusable but in the five and a half minutes of highlights that I saw uh, Pauk they, 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 they did look tasty yeah they're they, good and they, yeah. brilliant passing yeah. Put, uh, great movement for the players but when you're 2-0 up and okay uh, they kind of sealed the, 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 the two goal lead that that for me was a penalty every day of the week yes but as you were saying they initially I thought it was a dive and quickly Initial, yeah. got on mate, and moved it into the next phase of play yeah. and then they couldn't refer to VAR yeah. I mean it was a stone wall there's but no doubt about that more and more and more it's becoming a shambles Aye. the VAR decisions and things like that we spoke about it whether it's the Scott McTominay goal, whether it's um, that for Aberdeen this week, at 2-1 up, you think you score that penalty, it's Aye. game over. And you know what? There was always inconsistent. I, I, a man sitting here uh, who always uh, kind of supports our referees, who I think they've got an absolutely thankless task. Uh, but I, I admit, referees admit, there, 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 are, there has always been inconsistency. Did you hear what happened but to the ref in the game? Those inconsistencies that you were looking to be wiped out, yeah. maybe here, yeah. but they're still there. What happened to the ref uh, during the he game? He walked in after full time when he kind of saw back everything. He walked in and booted oh. his dressing room door. So it was ah, like he they? knew he'd so made he a mistake. Was raging. Yeah. Aye, so right. it kind of goes that way. And then, but again, that's where then he needed the call. Yeah. He well, needed a quick call from VAR. Yeah. Because that's just happens. old school. Referees in the past will realise you've been. Oh, there's stacks of examples that done through the years. Not all. Not all of them go kind of into the public domain of you know manage, uh, managers who've been sitting watching sports scene at night and they got a call for the ref. For that day, they say, look, yeah. you're probably watching it. I get that wrong. I'm so sorry. Even, Human error, nothing I could do about you, it. You saw it in the Thistle game last night. Thistle played Queen's Park. Uh, Queen's Park scored their second goal and uh, the linesman is flag up and the ref went over and consulted with yeah. him and gave the goal. Yeah. Which, even something like that, could it just take a wee second to pause the game? And but you know what? In that respect, because um, I had a, a few people get the wrong end of stick this on, I'd stated last week, the, the controversial one with uh, involving the Hearts Celtic game. When uh, you know when uh, they got the hearts get the penalty. Oh yes, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kyogo in the box, yeah. Kyogo, you didn't need to say who it was. (laughs) Uh, But anyway, when that happened, what I'm what I was trying to say to people is, yeah, in 2023, like it or lump it, you're going to get a penalty for that, right? But my point was, and uh, previously my point about that. Uh, was saying how, how how did Celtic and Earth how in Earth did they win a quadruple treble if the refs have all got it in front, mm. right? Easy to trip them up somewhere along the way, right? But the same token, if the refs are anti-Celtic, as we keep hearing for folk who believe that tosh, then that example last week that was an easy one to wave away. It's just it's so the, why would you go to bother to giving that when it looks so you know fifty fifty when it's we all know in football referees are the easiest to blame. Of course, and a lot of time it comes that way. And then the other game last night there's. Three games last night so Thistle and Queen's Park two each moved uh, to Friday night um, another one we can only buy tickets online which does my head in oh, I know. Um, and then um, but that was moved because the Scotland women's team are obviously playing the Netherlands on uh, Tuesday at Hamden so that had to be moved to the Friday night because there's got to be a four day gap I think for UEFA so and also Scotland women's team last night losing uh, 4-0 to the Netherlands Lisa Evans getting her 100th cap um, and then the third game last night, obviously, Dundee United continues yeah. the roller coaster, which takes us on to our second topic. We're point. wishing uh, Dundee United. I, I thought that was quite smart. I know our broth were the two happy. They've got part time players and been doing a shift. They, they put out a day. really good statement about it, I thought, and it was just kind of like, listen. This is happens. We understand it's TV for there's a benefit, but there's no benefit for us in this game. Yeah. Still took six hundred fans in a I know, night. and there's something. Come on, you've got to even. I would, I would challenge Dick Campbell with us if he was sat next to us. Uh, the, the, the actual hundredth birthday of Dundee United was last night, yeah. and he thought, let's have it on our actual one hundredth birthday. If I'm Dick Campbell, on. I argue against that the whole time because it's better for his team to play on the Saturday. I know, so, but how many times you're going to pals? You know, birthday drinks or parties, and it's like, oh no, it was actually last Tuesday, but we're having it the night. No, they wanted to do a birthday party properly, have it in the night of the birthday. I thought the retro strip was excellent. Yeah, well, I would yeah, love, yeah. I mean, I don't know what plans Dundee United have for them, but um, any big kind of charity events that are happening in Dundee, uh, and particularly Dundee United related, or the next well, if if somebody can get those donated, they, they will raise a fortune. Yeah, and they're going to need to raise money for to play the strip. Force they've got, cause but how sad did one make? Can I just say as well, and I, I believe this is a 
I'll always have a soft spot for Dundee United and I know one of our guests, Billy Kirkwood, synonymous with the club, yep. who'll be joining us. He was there last night. How sad in some respects though that they celebrated their 100th birthday as a lower league the club. Yeah, yeah, when you yeah, think yeah. everything that's happened to that club, when you think everything that happened for Jerry Kerr, onwards, Jim McLean, you know, European final, yep. you know, it, it's just, it's really, really sad. But it's not it's not a bad way to celebrate though, back to back, a 5-0 then a 6-0 win. Aye, against teams exactly. that are in the top half of the table in the so let me ask you this because as well as your thoughts the week in football uh, Rangers Celtic Aberdeen and Europe give us your thoughts as well I'm going to ask you about this first uh, before we leave the domestic stuff yeah all the hoo-ha about um, the uh, fixtures at the festive period. Uh, Celtic uh, away from home again. Seven years in a row. And uh, the Motherwell Rangers game been moved to Christmas Eve. Yeah. 12 noon kickoff. Uh, I think, quite frankly, at the clubs need to get over themselves. I think they've been hugely disingenuous because the bottom line is they can come out and they can squeal all they want, but all the clubs entered into this. All the clubs, they signed up with the Sky deal, right? And I, I firmly believe that when the clubs met with Sky, I, I genuinely think, Ray, that Sky maybe said to clubs, listen, there's going to be a couple of wee episodes uh, we'll, we'll, we'll raise their heads down through the season when we've got to rejig games and all that. You know, listen, guys, feel free to have a go at us. We won't, honestly, we won't take action. We won't get our lawyers on board. Slag Sky if you want. But if it makes you look as if you're defending your fans, this is outrageous yeah. that they've moved these games. Where it is just the club. If Brendan Rodgers saying it's outrageous, you know, it's all down to Sky, it's all down to the broadcasters. Seven have in a, a row word. seems a lot, have a, doesn't But it? have a word with the board in and yeah. say, right, the only way, we'll just need to look at something else. The, but the money at the need, even though we keep hearing that it's washers, it's nothing compared to England... It is vitally important to the clubs up the, here. The Christmas Eve game, which is Motherwell Rangers, it's a noon kickoff, isn't yeah. it? And I think it's very convenient that this announcement came out a couple of days after they announced that the uh, English Premiership were going to be playing Christmas Eve games for the first yeah. time. So they're trying yeah. to tie in with that deal. But I think also, for me personally, as someone who works on Saturdays a lot, if I was a fan, a Sunday game is better for me. Yeah. I'd be biased that way. But it totally depends for... I can see a lot of families will have Christmas Eve plans, pantos, things like that. It's... The consistency of Scottish football fans being dictated around TV money Aye. when at the same time we all think the TV money isn't enough. Aye, so absolutely. it's more the anger at the deal Aye. rather than is, everything in it. general. And, and the people that your eyes. It. And I think it's great. I think it's, oh, as long as, you know, Motherwell, uh, Rangers, uh, Brendan Rodgers, whoever, as long as you're seen to make the right noises and all the fans saying, that's great, they're yeah. sticking up for us. But you think, no, if they were sticking up for you, they wouldn't enter into I, these deals in the first place. I do like a wee Twitter statement. See what it just says. Rangers put out one yesterday. It just said, Motherwell, away and Aye. then they put the statement I like them Aye. because it goes back to the good old days of 2012 when Rangers put a statement out every 14 minutes we are second class citizens fans have always yeah. been treated as mugs and we always will be there's not enough concomitant in no, those was that Jim Trainer? was it concomitant concomitant it was a word that maybe put into Dave King's mouth via yeah Jim I remember Trader. that coming out that was concomitant great. Aye. now listen before we move on for Dundee United remember European football fixture changes the Sky TV deal whatever you want you can have a go at that 80295 in the text you can email off the ball at bbc.co.uk give me your uh, Dundee United we're wanting your tributes your thoughts your memories all things Dundee United who was your favourite player in that team back in the day it's a tribute on their 100th birthday which was last night so Ray go for it Dundee United uh, not a big fan <laughs> because <laughs> uh, first game I ever went to they relegated us oh, so playoff. yeah playoff 95-96 so um, where one of our guests Billy Kirkwood I believe was a manager at the time and yeah so that's my main memory of Dundee United a Christian Daly who scored the goal in the first game the home leg at Fur Hill um, I interviewed him recently and I brought that up uh, to him as well because yeah that's my main memory and Dundee United there was a game I'm going to try ballpark this is maybe 2003 or 2004 right. there was a moment when we played Dundee United away where I genuinely I used to go home and away and it was one of the moments when I was like why am I doing this 23rd of December a rearranged game Dundee United away nil nil Thistle and Stefan Bond I don't know if you remember him we signed up oh, for yeah. Celtic yeah. missed an open goal with about two minutes to go oh, finished right. nil nil I was freezing the whole game and I was just thinking, why am I doing this to myself? Aye. Why are we doing this? As, as I'm sure football fans who go home and away, you've had that feeling so, so many times. And they're my two main memories of Dundee United. Yeah. I don't remember us winning that much up there. 
Well, I, you know what? As much as I'll be accused of keep mentioning all things, I, I was waiting for this. <laughs> all I'm going to say, I'm going to not even mention the winners that day. <laughs> I have always said that it, it takes two to tango. I've said that for years about Dundee United, and ever since that day, I've had more than just a soft spot for them because they they were part of for me and for a lot of neutrals the greatest Scottish Cup final mm. ever. You know, I, so I also you... enjoyed their entire story because I'm older than you. Yeah. Uh, the whole Jim McLean story Winning the league Ralph Milne's chip At Dens Park uh, The two leg final Gothenburg being The fans applauding the winners uh, You know Ending up getting the fair play stand Because yeah. of uh, that performance From the supporters There's so much to love About Dundee United A great team to watch Watching them Pumping Barcelona uh, You know Imagine saying that now In a stadium now. like Imagine that You know Guys like John Clark Paul Sturrock Ian Ferguson You know Billy Kirk but Billy Kirkwood, one of the great, and we'll ask Billy when he comes in, but along me, I'm guessing boys like John Holt, uh, these were the guys that Jim McLean loved actually praising. He was not known for his praise, but the unsung heroes. The teacher's pets was. They, they had the guy, the, aye, Dundee United had a few of these guys that might be one of the headline grabbers, like a Sturrock or, yeah. or Big Dave Neary, and he? he's one of the coolest guys around. You had your boys like. Billy and like yeah. John Holton and all that who were dynamite for Dundee United but I've got so much time for them and the only time that I felt bad about them uh, some what would it be three and a half years after beating United in the cup and if any mother were Dundee United fans can remind me of the details of this but Tommy McLean it was it might even have been his last season and believe it or not we had a genuine chance of winning the league right and this was like 93 94 um, and we had a midweek game against Dundee United, and if we'd have won that, yeah. we were right up there with Rangers. We were we were going neck and neck, right? And then it was big Brian Welsh. Yep, I seem to think scored uh, for the edge of the box, a low drive. Oh, a grass and they, aye, and they beat us one now, and it was about eleven thousand at Fir Park that night, and that, that killed any hopes we had. Yeah. And it was really, I mean, what a buzz about Murrow thinking we, I mean. That, you know, winning a cup three years earlier was unimaginable. It was fantasy stuff. The very idea is the push for a chance in the league. You know, have so, you have you watched that cup final back anytime recently? No, I'll tell you the last time I watched it back in 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 in, in dispatches, if you like, uh, when they did during COVID, I the cracking wee Scottish Cup. I watched uh, it. That's when I watched memory it. Memory series. I would did say here. I watched the full um, ninety. Well. Uh, whole game actually and I would say if that game's played now minimum eight red cards yeah oh, it I was guess. Dave Bo tackles flying yeah. everywhere and I mean I'm going to ask Billy about this if I, I don't know if this is like asking a, an American soldier about Vietnam or something <laughs> but I mean even after the game and boots getting thrown I think Jim McAnally I think it was always credited to him throwing a boot towards like Davey Sign the referee you know there was all sorts of madness <laughs> after the game you know uh, but yeah so Dundee United happy birthday Dundee United and I'm going to and you know what I'm going with this I'm, I'm even going to because they're a hundred come on be going. nice even the Rangers fans <laughs> right who apparently blame you know I think they're blaming Dundee United for Michael Beale taking the job <laughs> right, you know uh, be nice right that's their hundredth birthday uh, give us your uh, tributes to Dundee United what is else that, you got because that us? covers uh, one of our guests Billy Kirkwood our other guest we're going to be joined by in the studio in a couple of minutes is Callum McFadden now Callum's uh, currently Celtic's commentator for the visually impaired so he does the games there he's also written a book we'll chat about he used to do lots of podcasts I'm sure if you're across social media you, you'll know Callum so we're going to talk about classic commentary mm. I'd imagine uh, doing audio described commentary is quite tricky but we want to hear from you the listeners the kind of most classic bits iconic bits of commentary you, you can remember or even things you like and don't like like I'll start you off my personal hate one of my big personal hates in football is when um, commentators you see it sometimes when it's like you go, they go to Somerset Park or Goodison Park Everton is something that you happen this all the time you hear the fans in the background swearing and all this kind of stuff oh. and the commentator apologises for the language I it's like know. guys I'm watching Air Inverness for this like exactly. this is what we want exactly. it's not that kind of thing that's one of my biggest Other commentators as well uh, you know a melee in the middle of the park oh. two teams kicking hell at each other well this is not what we want to see <laughs> yes it is yeah, yeah. yes it is yeah. the game up to now had been utter yeah. cack yeah uh, this is the first bit of entertainment we've had, you're right. Yeah, yeah. And 
just commentators, I think, in general, and I even think some of the commentators will agree with us, allow the pictures to paint a story. You don't need to speak relentlessly. Now, Callum, when he's doing the commentary for the visually impaired yep. Celtic fans, yeah, Callum's got to probably speak more than desired because he has uh, to be the, the fan's eyes, yep. basically, right? And that's fine. But for commentators in general and for the rest of us, we don't need incessant... Uh, commentary over the It's just filled thing. the whole time, yeah. You know, and that's the difference for me always because I'm a big snooker fan. I, that's where I would compare and contrast uh, Ted Lowe, whispering Ted Lowe back in the day, and like John Virgo now. John Virgo rips my nut and he was one of my heroes growing up when he did his cabaret when a session finished earlier back in the early 80s of uh, the Embassy Snooker World Championship, and he did live. All his impersonations in front of an enthralled I've never audience. Seen this. And it was shown live on the telly that day. It was brilliant, right? Is it kind of like Cliff Richards so singing at Wimbledon, that was, kind of thing? It was great. He's yeah. impersonating Alec Higgins and Terry Griffiths and Ray Reardon, right? It was majestic. So always, always, always have a blind spot for John Virgo. But when he's doing the commentary, he feels he's got to talk incessantly. And you think, whoa, we can see it. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. the green after the yellow, you know? But. Uh, so that would kind of annoy me a wee bit. I think it's going to be a really interesting chat to Callum about it because I don't think I've ever spoke to anyone that does the like visually impaired commentary. So I think it is going to be really interesting hearing the ins and outs of it. Aye, and I'll go because it's uh, it was a phrase as well. We're talking about a wee favourite bit of commentary, and as much as he's getting the big licks now. Uh, as a co-commentator uh, I'll remind you that Ali McCoy uh, did it years ago as well when he was drafted in for the odd game and in that Motherwell Dundee United Cup final because we're paying tribute to the 100th of Dundee United uh, oh brave as a lion that's how we described Phil O'Donnell the late great Phil was O'Donnell's he in that game? Uh, Ali was uh, riding shotgun uh, wow. to uh, Jock Brown um, and uh, so Ali that's the phrase he came up with brave as a lion yeah. and lo and behold when dear old Phil uh, passed away then that phrase was used in a lot of banners and stuff and tributes and it had come for Ali can originally. you imagine a player in the peak of their career doing cool commentary now exactly that would never happen exactly um, wow I didn't know that but yeah, so Ali dabbled in that a while back and it would have been the usual thing you know the cheeky chap and the man that's never lost for yeah, a love yeah, and all yeah. that so it made perfect sense and of course hey that we kind of YTS period doing it all the years ago it's come to fruition you look at him now he's the most popular co- uh, right. commentator you can get so, so listen classic commentaries are a wee snippet give me what about for Partick Thistles are a wee bit you'll never forget or even just a game that you loved a Scotland game Scotland game the McFadden uh, goal right. in uh, 2007 against France obviously there'll be that one with Thistle I don't know I, do you know what I actually turned off commentary for the first time when I watched back oh. the um, the Thistle Dingwall highlights the Ross County game this year because uh, when we were uh, oh. 3-0 up with what 19 we did in Aberdeen essentially 19 minutes to go and I had the I can't remember who it was uh, it was on Sky and they were laying into how bad the defending was mm. and I, I was watching the highlights back on YouTube because I was at the game you know how sometimes you watch it back just to kind of yep. see if you got it and I was like I can't do this and I just muted YouTube because it was making me so so sad well, I'll have you tell got you, another one? I'll tell you and I don't know if you know them but the the, the, the two Partick Thistle fans that were in a fortnight ago for the Hard, hard Game, game two, two yeah, yeah. campaign yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Die Hard fans right? And honestly see the change in their demeanour <laughs> Honestly <laughs> Desmond the D word Desmond Morris was would have had a field day just watching their body language when we asked them I just casually said and I meant it for the heart I said I know the, the details for me as a model fan are sketchy that day how did yeah. it all pan out again what happened yet? and see when they started talking about yeah. it sweat was, I was running off them I was at uh, my wee boy's nursery Halloween party and one of his friends big brother had a thistle top on he was just coming in before going to watch a game and he had lawless on the back so nine ten year old kid I went over and chatted to him we were chatting Thistle stuff and then I went did you go to Dingwall and he, this ten year old kid turned to me and went why would you bring that up and I was like yep he's scarred I'll too I'll tell you you gave me flashbacks here scary ones as well just be mentioning that story at the time when I was a kid and uh, I got left um, unattended uh, when my dad took me to the wrong nursery <laughs> and then for the next tours I was just surrounded by these trees and shrubs and everything <laughs> Oh, ah, lovely. Right, lovely. so anyway, it was a word nursery. That's, yeah, I got, I got it, I got it. And the other thing I can do, give me a word and I'll give you a joke. <laughs> but anyway, the uh, final topic we've got today 
Uh, Hang on one shakes. Yeah, this is a nice wee list of one. We'll go with this. And uh, again, uh, you can uh, give us some clues to this, for example. We're looking at famous handshakes because the handshake that wasn't quite a handshake looked a bit grotty, I must admit. I know that we'll be the first of a wee laugh and a wee sneer almost uh, with Brendan Rogers after his midnight flit coming back and <laughs> soaking in with the Celtic fans and all that. But uh, I felt sorry for Brendan the other night. Um, you know, we went to do the dutiful thing, the normal gentlemanly hand, give yeah. the boy the handshake, and he kind of was, he, uh, he was kind of almost as good as waved aside. Nice uh, it? You know, and I thought, oh, you get, I, that was rotten, you know. He'd have been well within his rights to, 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 to fly a punch at him or something. But yeah, I hate when you see players strop off at the end of the game and not do the handshakes as well. I, I, I know. What well, the thing the is, the, well, no, the players don't do handshakes now anyway. Oh, fist Did you bombs. see when they're, uh, down the line at the start of a game, it's all yeah. that, yeah. As if they're going to arm wrestle with yeah, them. Yeah, the claps. Aye, what's, what's wrong with a good firm handshake? As Jim Bone says on every repeated episode of Bullseye a Minute, hey, nice firm handshake. Good, you know, <laughs> that's that. There was something good about that, you know. Um, but you never see the handshakes. But we're talking about the memorable ones. Now, these could be from history. We both leapt in up at the canteen. We were talking about it was deemed as maybe the end of the Cold War, yeah, Gorbachev yeah. and Reagan. Yep. When they shook hands back in 84, 85, must have been about then. Yeah. Uh, that was seen as a very significant handshake. You, of course, you then had the handshake that then became a bit of a squeeze and a firmer and firmer grip. Huh. And, uh, and then, of course, it was Messrs, McCoy yeah. and Lennon when they had their uh, spot so on the side. Imagine that jumps in as well. It all becomes a big belly. Three oh, players did. Set off, it? Yeah, remember that? Oh, it really, really did. And uh, any other ones we were talking about now? We're trying to find ones from films. There was one that we had in our head that we couldn't remember. So we want kind of iconic handshakes from films or even awkward ones you can think of. We were talking as well, Patrice Ever, I remember him and Luis Suarez not shaking hands and stuff like that, and that became a big... A furore after that with all the and before the every Celtic fan sends us the photo, uh, maybe one of the most viewed photos ever of John Gregg shaking hands with Tiny Wharton. Yeah. And what is the, 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 the most Masonic looking handshake <laughs> in the history of Masonic handshakes? We've all seen that one, right? Yeah. But if you've got any others, it's a one word topic handshakes. Uh, get them in. Maybe you've got some tales and to tell. Also, if you still COVID. do them. If you still Aye. do them, because I'll say to Tam a lot of the time now, even like I still play amateur football and stuff like that, it's fist bumps. It's fist bumps after the game and people don't really like, because COVID stopped handshakes for a bit. So were you disgusted when I saw you this morning? I hadn't seen you for a few weeks and I shook your hand in the old fashioned way. Yeah, uh, no, I wasn't disgusted. I was just at the toilet, so I was more worried for you, right. if anything. But right. no, okay. not too much. But no, I think I don't mind between the two. And I noticed in comedy as well, usually ah! when the compare came off, you'd all shake hands. Now it's fist from bumps. comedy. There we go. That's other handshakes we'll take if oh. anybody suggests he does. Uh, only fools and horses. Oh, that's not the one I was uh, thinking of. Jolly Boys Outing. They stop at the halfway house. Del Boy is in the toilet with Mike for the nags head. And Del Boy meets a mate who's since gone down to Margate. He's opened a club and he's got tickets. And the boy. Finishing his, his pee, shake hands with Dell, and Dell, you know, he's disgusted right away, and the boy does it twice. So that would have been a handshake from the world of television. I thought you, uh, Banzai was one we were talking about as well. Now, was it Mr. Shake Hands, Mr. Shaky Hands, Mr. Shake, whatever the wee guy was I called? Remember seeing it, but I couldn't place it. We're hearing it's Mr. Shake Hands Man, and he would turn up at kind of red carpet events and he would shake hands. I think that was meant to be the deal. Uh, I think and he would shake hands yeah. with a famous person and he'd basically put the stopwatch on it to see how long <laughs> he could get away with it you know it's so good so but petty so handshakes silly. is a great topic uh, classic commentary we're going to be joined by Callum McFadden um, he does commentary at Celtic games for visually impaired fans give us your thoughts on that for a start fascinating chat we can have with Callum about all of that uh, what do you love what do you hate about football commentary happy 100th Dundee United uh, and maybe even here's one right if the Rangers fans weren't they going to wish Dundee United a happy birthday at least in a sly manner suggest what would be an appropriate birthday yes, gift yes that's good yes, right, an yeah, appropriate yeah. birthday gift for Dundee United and the week in football all the European stuff fixtures getting changed over the Christmas period daddy daddy da and our uh, team 
game of the week very briefly. Nice and simple, based on in. what happens tonight. Is the we're looking for the clock eleven. We basically all get an extra hour hours sleep yeah. tonight, or yeah. two, if you watch the Mamma Mia competition <laughs> thing that was on last week. Did you see that? No, no. I, I, someone was asking me if I was going to watch it. I was like, no. Well, take it from me. I have seen Mamma Mia the stage show seven times. Wow. Uh, between America and Scotland, I'm a huge fan, and I was disgusted. Uh, but really? Um, last week, I couldn't. Have, so uh, so if, the the clock eleven. We're looking. Some of the ones. Do you have on. any ones? We've got a uh, some terrible ones so far. A uh, big Ben Doak. Big Ben Doak. A oh. Players famously quite small. Uh, Jurgen Klopp. Jurgen Klopp. And that's easy uh, one. Philip Cuckoo. So oh, as in okay. Philip Koku I think also the ones that I've come up with When you have to explain who the players are afterwards It doesn't make it as good So anything to do with clocks, clocks. Time, and grandfather No, 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 no Nothing to do with time, it's clocks But time, you can do the hands on the no, things I, as well the hands, okay But yeah. no time, somebody kind of just You know, come in with something else But the, uh, yeah, clocks And clocks rather than watches Yes Clocks. Yes. 80295 in the text. You can email off the ball bbc.co.uk. And else it takes your fancy. Um, and it's uh, Ray sitting in uh, today for Stuart, who's on his Cassius X. Uh, tour, a tour. Tour. Nice. And he's doing the, the tour and, of course, the documentary film Great. that's been made. So you're tuned to Off the Ball on BBC Radio Scotland. Today's topics, like Tam said, the week in Scottish football, a happy 100 to Dundee United, classic commentary, and the handshake you won't forget. Our team of the week is the Clock 11. If you want to get in touch, you can text us on 80295, email off the ball at bbc.co.uk. It's time to welcome in our guests, so please welcome Billy Kirkwood and Callum McFadden. Images. Claire Grogan, happy birthday So we need to start with Billy Kirkwood uh, Welcome back to the show Billy Damn Years me. ago uh, Billy uh, was on Even had a microphone at work back in the day Yeah I was thinking, <laughs> that. I don't know if that was me or not Fine now, we're fine now Billy you were at the birthday party last night What was it like? Excellent, I've got to say It was uh, a very good game Weather was atrocious And I think Dundee United They got just under 9,000 Which was fantastic for yeah. a Friday night 600 are both fans Credit to them as and well. And what a way to celebrate and have a party six oh, goals. Fantastic. Well, you know. it was five the previous week. Sorry, Ray. Aye, cheers for bringing that up already. <laughs> but literally 40 <laughs> seconds in, all right. And six last night. So uh, for Dundee United on that day in particular, it was fantastic. They were excellent to start with, but our both were very So cool. it's a lovely kind of warm memory kind of story. So who were the other guys that you saw last night? What old pals did you bump into? Well, Malpass, uh, Hegarty, Holty. Uh, Ian Ferguson, ex Dundee, ex Rangers, yeah. uh, he was there as well. And ones that uh, I can relate to George Fleming, who's one of my mentors when I was yeah. a young lad, yeah. and Andy Rowland, who is looking fantastic at 81. So, okay. uh, some of the other ones, uh, Sean Dillon and Matt Reynolds as well, who you will know. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. So, Aye. that was a good cross section. Right, uh, it must it have been there. brilliant. And again, we're saying it, okay, our both weren't 100% happy. Moving the game to the Friday, but to have a night like that on the club's hundredth birthday, yeah. absolutely terrific. It's just a pity that it couldn't have been on on TV, live TV. You know, it would have been a good game. Yeah, the Scotland uh, yeah. women's team game was on as well. But I think also, I I, I said to Tabby earlier, I think the game should have been played today. I don't uh, on the day of the hundredth seems a bit. You could easily play it on the Saturday. Did you think it was better? It was last night. And the second part of this question is, did you get free booze? Uh, no free booze, I was driving. Oh. Uh, no free booze. <laughs> I, I agree with you, but I, I think just the, the fact it's on the day, I think it was a good celebration. And Tam, Tam touched on a lovely point there um, before about how Dundee United, it's a shame in their 100 season, uh, they're in the championship. But when I was watching them last week, see to have a team with a strike force, Tony Watt, Louis Moult, you've got Glenn Middleton in there. Do you feel like Dundee United f failed badly last season and obviously... 
unbeaten this season surely they're on their way up again this season well they should looking at the, the, the league at the moment and it's a very competitive league and I've watched that in the last couple of years uh, with my previous job and stuff yep. like that so it is a competitive league you guys will know what it's like getting so close yeah to, to getting promoted last year uh, There's no givens in it But Dundee United should get up this year Aye. They did fall flat in their face last year Unfortunately it was the 40th year of Dundee United winning the league uh, And they get relegated in that same season That's ironic yeah. But I think this year they should get up But knowing the manager Jim Goodwin You'll probably be looking at that and assessing things in January And looking forward to the start of next year Aye. Hopefully in the Premiership Another thing is as well Two points about that um, Billy wouldn't have played against us at that period But when Motherwell ran away with the first division Season 81-82 Under Davy Hay We were the top scorers in British football yep. Fans love all that you know. Yeah. So as much yeah. as it'll hurt Dundee United fans Last season would have hurt them greatly yeah. But once you start you know, There's five goals this week Six goals next it's week It's also a chance know. to restructure yeah, as well exactly. Which always helps you Can you yeah. imagine if last night's birthday party Of Dundee United had been in the top flight and they'd get pumped 3 0 at home, let's say, by St. Murray. It's a, it's a but, good laugh, though, isn't it? Like, you get what you want. But I, I think credit to the fans to turn out on the, the night it was just yeah. under 9,000. I mean, yeah. that'll be one of the top crowds in Scotland this weekend. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. the championship. Yeah. And as you say, Tam, if you go down a division, you can reinvent yourself. Punters want to see entertaining games, they want to see goals. That's but what also, it's all the, about. the signings you made, guys, you signed two players from us, Ross Doherty, who became captain straight away, yeah. Uh, yeah. Kevin Holt. Um, great kind of. Guys, who for the spine of the team, and it lets you kind of build back up. Do you think they're relying on youth as much? Because that was something that happened the last few years. Dundee United bringing a lot of young players through. Is is that happening as much this year? Yeah, well, they've got a few coming in. Fotheringham played last night and scored a good goal at the back post. And uh, could you as well? He came on yeah. and scored a great goal. Individual, fantastic. That was the last one. Yeah, uh, Mockery is there. It says a lot of how many goals Dundee United scored last night when he went. I think it was the last one. Yeah. <laughs> like it just shows <laughs> how <laughs> easy a game it was. And we can't have somebody like Billy Kirkwood sitting there without saying you're, you're duty bound to say this. And Billy, you've still got three years left in the deal that you signed for Jim McCoy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah right. I think it was an S form. Right. Please <laughs> mention that, or else we get kicked out of the studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Billy, just before we move on to Callum McFarlane Adding. Fascinating story Can't wait to hear what Callum's telling us About the commentary for the visually impaired supporters um, Looking back to that period at Dundee United I mean you've been a man of quite a few clubs You've been maybe synonymous uh, Latterly been a, a number two A hell of a lot of clubs But when you were playing with Dundee United What for you was the ultimate What was what was the moment that you'll never forget Oh winning the league I was to say. And it, Again there's not just one moment UEFA Cup final, uh, European Cup semi final, and me saying that now, looking at the young Dundee United fans, will be thinking, seriously, that I happened. Know. But yeah. in uh, that particular time, you had Aberdeen, Dundee United, who were absolutely flying. Celtic and Rangers were slightly behind us, but Scottish football in that particular time, it was a golden year. Because Callum, Callum, you're a youngster. What year were you born in? 95. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for that, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. He's never lived yeah, through that yeah, period, and yeah. it seems. So, uh, we go into the pitch at half time which was great and the fans are there and you're, you're getting the reciprocal adulation and stuff but a load of the punters in that stand there like Andy Rowland the way back and George Fleming yeah. 81, 75, yeah. 76 respectively and we're all in their 60s now but a load of the younger fans were thinking who's that guy? You know, Who's that old guy there? But yeah. they were part of that yeah. club coming through and Absolutely. for Dundee United to have that success and hopefully I don't know all the names come. for that era and what helps as well even though there's always this slight mythology about what the actual number is I mean they say oh Dundee United they won the league way Nine players Yes <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right. yeah Now we believe the figure might be What do you reckon Billy 15, 16 Yeah it, it, Maybe even up towards 18 Because there were right. some of the guys That came Lazy. in That played maybe Three or four games The nucleus of the lads Was about 13 or 14 Aye. That played the majority it's, of the games Can you imagine but that But the great thing about that Is the point I was going to make The great thing about it In terms of young Dundee United fans And uh, stories being passed on For their dads Their granddads Whoever Because that wasn't an era When you had guys Coming in for Finland For yeah. a, a two month loan period And disappearing uh, Because you didn't have The freedom of contract As you know We talk about Jim yeah. McLean again But what it means is All the names All the guys Your 
Hegarty's, Kirkwood's, Bowman, you know, uh, you know, uh, Sturrock, all that, you know, the, the fans, you all resonate with the young you, fans. We you know, to stay within 25 miles of Tannadice. Yeah. That was a stipulation as well, which you're probably saying now, employment laws and things like yeah. that, I know, but that brought a togetherness. But it's also the fact that Dundee United made uh, five subs last night, so they already used 16 in one game, <laughs> which is very <laughs> much what they did. And I see, just before we move on to Cal Billy, um, I think you were one of the first people that ruined football for me um, for two reasons I think you played a part in the first two football games I went to I'm, I'm pretty sure about this but correct me if I'm wrong how old are you Ray? I'm uh, 35 Thanks. so my first uh, ever football game was Thistle 1 Dundee United 1 up at Fir Hill in the playoff um, final oh yeah and yeah, I think yeah. you, were you the manager I was the manager okay. yeah and yeah. my yeah. second game was a year later um, and I went to Thistle played a pre-season friendly against Hull when Mark Hately was a manager ah, and you were the assistant. Yes, Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So you ruined my first two football experiences. <laughs> Cheers for that, mate. I was thinking that today because I remember uh, my grandpa telling me all about it. He would take me to yeah, games times. and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, you won 3 now, and the next week I saw us lose 3 now to Aston Villa when Dwight York scored two. And yeah. I was like...